there's this whole other world that we never get to see, but we're participating with it all the time. I'm saying it, it's there, it exists, and I, I want to photograph it. Now, this is an artist in a time that have come together in a very powerful way. He is the artist that personifies the environmental issue more than anyone I know in the world. When I was 11, my dad and I saw an ad in a newspaper that there was a widower who was selling her dark room. She said, you can have the whole, everything in it, the contents for 25 bucks. So all of a sudden I had uh, a, my own camera with a bulk loader with hundreds of feet of tri -X. So it was kind of like today, if you give a kid a, an iPhone, you don't really care if they shoot 100 pictures, you could just delete. Well, back then, you know, if you had the family camera, you couldn't just go and shoot the legs and floor of your kitchen table or something. You say, stop wasting film. I was able to go out, and if I liked something, I would just shoot more and more frames of it. Then it emerges in a tray of developer under this orange light, and it was like magic. I was hooked. I can take like 20 images. There's always going to be one that's more interesting. My early, early recollections of some of the favorite things that I enjoyed being Canadian was going out into the landscape. So I started to think about the landscape and how we change that landscape. And being uh, a resource-based country, there was all kinds of examples. So I'd drive from Toronto into Sudbury and start looking at the tailings and looking at the mines and trying to capture that on film. I was using color, large format, and at that time color was largely seen as a commercial medium. If you wanted to be a serious artist back then, you had to work in black and white. This is something that we're engaged with. We can't have these cities and we can't have this lifestyle without incursion into that landscape to get the materials. I'm kind of just showing the scale of industry and it has multiple meanings. One can look at it as an environmental disaster, one can look at it as a human progress, one can look at it from the point of view of uh, artistic merit and whether it captures the imagination and the sense of wonder. I think if you look at the whole body of work, there is a story of the tilting of the balance that we've now become almost too successful, we've got our boot on the neck of nature and we're not letting up. That story has kind of emerged in the last 10 or 15 years as we recognize global change in climate and as we realize resource extraction, as we see the oceans being depleted of fish. So all these things are now coalescing to point to the fact that seven billion human beings on the planet is having a consequence. These are still little, little snippets of a big, big thing, yeah. Yeah, China was like that too. There's no way you can actually comprehend the scale of China, but you can kind of make a feeble attempt with a frame, you know. <laughs> There's an urgency, I guess, that I have now that it wasn't as present. I was still kind of taken by wonder of the scale of things at the very beginning and looking at the largest examples, but that wonder's kind of turned to concern. Well, how are we gonna stop, you know, being who we are?